In GeoGebra, we can relate functions and compare them and have them interact with each other. So one example is that we can look at the way sine waves interact with each other and affect the tones that we hear. So the first thing we're going to do is set up some indexed variables. I'm going to use a sub 1 for amplitude of our first function and I'll just set it equal to some number, let's say 1. Next I'm going to set up omega sub 1. So I click this button over here. This gives me my Greek symbols. Pick omega sub 1 and this is my um, angular frequency. This affects the pitch of the tone. Okay, and then last we have phi sub 1, which stands for phase, or the timing of our, of our sine wave. So now we just enter in phi sub 1, that'll be for our first function, and have that equal 1. And now I plug in the function that relates these three, and right also defines how the sound waves move. So we have the amplitude, or a sub 1, of the sine wave with an angular frequency, so I'm going to use uh, omega again. Click my button over here. Omega, oops, I'll have to go in parentheses. Omega sub 1 times x, so space x, plus phi sub 1. So I go over here, select phi sub 1, right? And this uses the index variables I've defined so far and puts them into a function. I hit enter, and then, oops, I have to fix my sine function here. There should be a space there. Try that again. And there we go. So there's our first sine wave. And next, we can do the same thing with another set of index variables. So a sub 2, let's have it equal 1. Well, let's have it equal 2. And then omega sub 1, right? That's the angular frequency. Oops omega sub 2, apologies, equals 2, let's say, and then phi sub 2 for our phase. Okay, now I'll set up another function, let's say g of x equals a sub 2 times the sine of omega sub 2, so omega sub 2 times x plus phi sub 2, and I'm setting this up so we can see how GeoGebra deals with this idea. So there are two waves, and one thing that's really fun to look at is what happens when we add these waves together? How does that affect the final pitch that you hear? So I'm going to create, let's say, another function, h of x, which equals the sum of f of x plus g of x. So you can just, by creating each function and then having another function that relates them, you could see how these things will interact with each other. So what I'm going to do is create some sliders to mess with our variables over here. So we have, there's our first amplitude, oops. And I think it's, again, it's important with these to make sure that the labels are on them. So go here, click show label, name and value. We don't want to lose track of that amplitude. And then we want to show the slider for amplitude too. Put that over here, and again, I'll label it. You want to label all of these, show label, and then write phi sub 1, that's the phase, I'll put that over here, and show label, and phi sub 2, again, now on this side, and I want to show my label, and then right, omega sub 1 for our angular frequency here in the first one, and then omega sub 2 which I'm going to drag over here. And the point is that by setting this up, we'll, we're going to see, first of all, how these functions interact, and secondly, how these variables affect our sine waves. You might not even need to define amplitude or angular frequency or the phase, but by having students play with the values of these amplitudes, right, they can see that, oh, this value somehow makes the height and and depth of the wave larger or that range from top to bottom. So that might, just by playing with these, they might have or be able to con conclude what these variables do. The last thing I would do here is color code. Um, so we have three functions and let's make f of x a certain color. It doesn't really matter, of course, but it's nice to have them different so we can keep track of how these waves interact. And that's something to think about as you create 
different types of applications of interaction functions. So now g of x, have that be a different color, right? And now what's nice is this pink wave is, excuse me, the black wave is now the result of adding these two waves. We want to figure out what's the, the easiest way or the, right, or the best way to get that black wave be the loudest or to reach the highest frequency there, right, or the highest amplitude, excuse me. So they can play with these to see what's happening in terms of all these variables. And the point is in GeoGebra, we can have these variables interact with each other. We can have these functions interact as well, and then use it to make some conclusions about how they behave. All right, hope that helped.